Never stop training it and in on a leg right away. Immediately, yeah. I mean, it is no secret that Jessica Crane, who, whose number one performance is the ones that she's lost, it has been by leg lock. And Alexa's locked around the entire body. I think that's a very interesting attack here. She's locked all the way around Jessie's upper body and arms, which makes it very, very hard for Jessie to come up and defend the legs. She may be hunting for a toll right now. I can't really see what's happening down there. She does have the hands on the grip. I can see the grip. She has it right there. But Jessica Crane, you can see, trying to trying to kick off those grips. And the, the long legs of Yanez makes that triangle so powerful, right? Yeah, this has got to be a frustrating position for Jessica Crane. She's looks really composed, though. She looks composed, but definitely in danger at the moment here. Very much so. Yeah, Alexa Yanez is in a very strong position to get the submission here, but Crane looks incredibly calm. The thing about this position, though, that, that it's uh, a little bit hard to tell, is she has a strong lock around the, the body, but she has no isolation of the leg. So it does make it hard to finish the leg attack if the leg is not included inside inside Alexa's legs. Adjust the grip once again now, has the toe hold grip. She has the hand positioned correctly, but does she have the correct leverage to be able to finish that submission? The look on Jessica Crane's face says no so far. And you'd have to think, oh, switches to the other foot. Yeah, without any control around the leg, Alexa doesn't have any isolation of the leg. It's going to be very hard to finish this, but it does make it very hard for Crane to move because her body is locked inside the triangle of Alexa. They have to think, after those performances here, uh, who's number one, that Jessica Crane lost by leg lock, I, I would have imagined she would have dedicated time to addressing those mistakes, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think we might see Alexa at some point try to unlock and bring one of her knees to the inside position so she can start getting some more isolation of the hips and the hamstring. Um, but she hasn't been able to do that just yet. It's a great observation. You can see, of course, as well, that Crane is trying to improve her position and hand fight. And this is actually a little bit better now. You may see Yanis try to open up that triangle. Yeah, it's going to be much better for Jessie if she can come up to both of her knees and start to open that triangle oh, up. It's on again. Yeah, if from this position you can get some torque on the foot, but but because Jessie's able to use that left foot to kick it off over and over, it's, I think it's going to be very difficult to get the finish. So we're going to see Jessie probably come up to her knees, uh, or Alexa's going to have to release and try to bring her knees inside. Jessie being pretty pretty cautious here, uh, just a little bit patient. She doesn't want to leave her feet out dangling unnecessarily, but she is trying to come up to both of her knees and maybe use her arms to swim inside the legs, open that triangle up. But we can see on her face, she doesn't look too worried about the leg attacks here. And a hand fighting here going through on the right arm of Alexa. Taking some of the pressure off. I'm, I'm amazed actually by the persistence here and the game plan sticking to the, the attack very stubbornly and working on it. I think that Yanis' game plan is so clear and she's not deviating from it one bit. Still with the composure on the face of Jesse, kind of looking at the, at the referee as well, you know, with a nice calm face. I think as soon as she gets that foot free, we will see a little bit more insistence to come up now to start getting some more action going. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Karina hasn't uh, made any attempt to open the, the legs of Yanez. I think she knows that's keeping her a little bit safe and the leverage is not optimal for Yanez. Uh, and that's going to be the critical moment here in this match is when does Yanez open her guard and uh, what position do they end up in? Exactly, right? If she can get a nice bite on the leg before she opens and then opens quickly and shoot into more of like a knee bar position or a better finishing position, she's going to be in good shape. But Jessie, she's doing a good job of kind of walking her knees back over and over here to take to not let Alexa's hips get too close. But I think we'll maybe see her try to bring her elbows inside. She does have to be careful with the triangle, though, if one arm gets stuck. But now we have a bit of a deeper position from Alexa. Still doesn't have isolation of the leg, though, with her legs. And now kind of off to the side in more of a perpendicular position. Not quite what we want to see when we're trying to finish that knee bar. I'm wondering, yeah, if she is going to open that and go for the knee, because she's got it. She's got a pretty good underhook of the thigh, right? She's got a pretty good grip there. But opening that, opening that lock around the waist is so risky, right? She's got a moment to make it work. And if she gets it wrong, Crane could counterattack. Yeah, 
It is hard to say, though, because if she doesn't open it, it's, gonna be, it's, it's, it's only going to, you know, she's not really able to finish here. Now we, see, okay. now we see inside position with that left knee. This is much better for Alexa here, unless it turns into a smash pass from Jesse. But yeah. Alexa's hips come on top. This is exactly what she needs to be doing here. This is a great position for Alexa. That triangle around the waist unlocked and now offers Crane the opportunity to counter attack. But Yanis is still in a pretty solid position. Judges favor Alexa Yanis. Yeah, and I think that the, the persistence in the face of the submission attack and the control is really shutting down Jesse Crane. 100% easy to see why the judges favor Alexa Yanis at this point. I think we see Alexa uh, pull on that heel and open up the leg towards her head, the leg with the band on it, then she can start to get the angle she needs for the knee. Otherwise, Jesse's continuing to be able to drop her right hip down and make it very hard to get that extension that Alexa needs for the knee bar. Heavy pressure there from Crane, fighting her hands inside as well. She can sprawl that leg back, kick it out. She may even be able to go straight into a guard pass or go to the back, but that grip, the palm-to-palm the -palm grip, the S-grip of Alexa Yan is very powerful so far. Yes, is a very difficult position because if she can sprawl her leg back, she can pass, but if it gets sucked back in, she's going to be in danger. But now we end up in a more of a 50-50 position here. I believe that they call this the outside Ashi. <laughs> My leg lock terminology. Oh, on a heel he's hook here from oh, Jesse Crane. Oh, counter-attack. And that was Big dangerous. Big heel hook from Jesse. Huge reaction there from Alexa Yanez. She knew she was in trouble, and Crane's still on it. Wow, that is on. The knee is still inside. Yeah, Crane couldn't be happier with this turn of events here. She's on the offense and really chasing this heel hook. Hard to see the grip exactly if it slipped out or not. I think it has, yes, the into now, this is the 50-50, and that, that, is the, that is the danger of hanging out in that position, because your opponent can fire off a heel hook in the blink of an eye, and Yanis was in serious trouble there. That, I feel, was way more significant than any of her toehold attacks earlier. Definitely got a bigger reaction here, and we see Yanis uh, now looking to maybe start on her toehold attack series again. But now things are much more even, as pointed out consequence of this 50 position here. Well, literally 50-50, the name it sort of says, isn't it, that they both have the opportunity to attack. It's literally half and half. And if one opens up, the other one can counter attack and vice versa. Again, looking to try and dig out that heel. Yana is a little more careful now. She's on the toe hold. Yeah, the toe hold versus heel hook battle is kind of a risky game to commit to. Uh, oh, there's another heel hook. Yanis taps, Jessica Crane gets the submission, the inside heel hook. What a comeback from Crane after being tied up in that awkward position for so long. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by way of inside heel hook submission, Jessica Crane. Jessica Crane of Aries BJJ in front of her hometown crowd, addresses the mistakes of her past, leveled up her leg lock game, and wins via submission here at Tezos, who's number one. What an impressive performance indeed. You know, it is not easy to withstand some of those positions that she found herself in. That body triangle, the leg lock attack, full five minutes of defense, pretty much. Then, of course, when it went into this 50-50, you can see it right here the leg lock attack she had to contend with. Yeah, she was very patient, very composed, and then once the leg was open, it was on. She was ripping those great, great, great attacks by Jesse. Yeah, really she took the defense. words out of my mouth. We were talking about uh, toe hold versus heel hooks, and here we see the finishing movement there from Jesse Crane. Powerful, powerful lock, close, and uh, takes home the W. Huge extension into the, the knee joint as well. You can see that not just the rotation, but also bridging the hips up and into the knee and Yanis had no choice but to tap out. Jessica Crane, that was an incredible submission, very powerful heel hook. You must be very happy right uh, now. I'm very excited. A lot of my teammates came out to support, and uh, this is my, home, my uh, city, so I'm going to represent. Um, I know a lot of people keep uh, thinking I don't know heel hooks. <laughs> I get there, but uh, I made progress, and uh, you can keep counting me out, but... Uh, 
you know, I wasn't worried at all, and uh, I did what I needed to do, so I'm excited. I'm going to spend the night watching good matches and celebrating. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's say how it is, though, right? That you you definitely uh, found yourself in some difficult positions in the past. You learned from those mistakes. And it looks to me like you leveled up your leg lock game as a result because you look comfortable in the defensive situations, but then you fired back with an attack of your own. Yes, I did. Um, I know that, you know, I think it was a good assumption for a lot of people to think that uh, I have gotten submitted three matches uh, on who's number one by uh, heel hook. Um, and I've definitely made progress. You know, I don't go back to the gym and forget about my matches. I work on it every day. And if you watch uh, each match, even if I lose, I progress. And uh, I fix mistakes, and I'm going to keep doing that because I want to be the best in my division. The girls in my division are stacked, but I'm coming, you know. Uh, I'm going to be here for a long time, so they're not going to get rid of me. <laughs> well, it was a great submission. We love to see her here at Tessa's Who's Number One. Congratulations, Jessica Crane. Thank you so much.